Hello everyone! Good day again to all of you. We are on week 12 of the Gospel Explained series. For the past three weeks, if you remember, we've been asking these questions. If we truly put our hope in the Gospel and in the cross of Jesus Christ, how will that belief in Jesus really change us? How many of you want to change again for the better? Only by putting our faith in Jesus and the Gospel will we really change, and there's no other way. Week 9 uh, of the series, we learned that in order for us to change, we have to grasp, internalize, and take to heart our new identity and status in Christ. We are dead to sin and alive in Christ Jesus. Paul says, consider yourselves dead to sin and alive in Christ Jesus. This should be one of the most pervading thoughts that fills our minds and all of our lives. In week 10, we learned that we are no longer slaves to sin, but slaves to God. Slaves of righteousness, right? There's no such thing as pure freedom for human beings. We are either slaves to sin or slaves of God. Pili lang tayo. We just have to choose who will rule and reign over our lives. Hopefully, it's God. If we do that, we, we accept the fact that we ought to fully surrender our lives to Him. Amen? And last week, we talked about the law. Paul emphasized that we should no longer be bound to the law. We have died to the law. Dapat mag yung attitude and mindset natin in living this life. It's not about trying to perform for God based on our effort and strength. Kasi hindi natin kakayanin, left on our own, right? Plus, if we pound the law too much for our lives, sin will seize the opportunity, do you remember that? Through the commandment. It may actually backfire against us. The law arouses sinful passions within. But always remember that the law is good. It's holy. Jesus did not come to abolish the law. The law shows us more of our depravity and our need for a Savior. Kasi sin talaga yung issue dito. Yan talaga yung rason bakit gusto natin bumait, pero di natin magawa. Alam na alam niya di ba? So what's the only solution for us to change in this life for the better? Sabi ni Paul in the last part of Romans 7, Thanks be to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Yung gospel lang talaga makakapagbago sa atin. Amen? In this life, we will see how truly wretched and depraved we really are. And all the more, make us need and depend on Jesus our Savior. So there, you knew last week. Today serves as a continuation from the truths that Paul mentioned in Romans 7. If you remember, we read this verse from last week, Romans 7 verse 6, sabi niya, But now we are released from the law. It's no longer about us trying to keep the law and let it be our source of identity and status. Having died to that which held us captive so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. May bagong paraan. There's a new way for us on how to live. No longer bound to the law. Kasi hindi talaga makakatulong yung ganong klaseng pag-iisip and mindset. A mindset of being bound to the law. Today, we're going to look at this new way on how we're to live and how we should orient our lives. Ganito na tayo dapat mag as Christians. If you can grow and cultivate this further in our lives, then we will be on the path to true growth, change, and sanctification if we live in the new way of the Spirit, okay? So if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open them with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 19 to 17. Actually, we're going really going to study Romans 8, 1 to 17, but I'm just going to read verses 9 to 17 for you. It says here, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Let's just take this time to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. God bless the preaching of your word. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just reveal to us your, your word in greater depth, Lord God. I pray it will minister 
to everyone who will hear this message. Help us grow in you, Lord God. Not by our own works or effort, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say online, Amen, Amen, and Amen. For today's message, we learn that the primary way that Christians can grow, mature, change, and be sanctified is through the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. Thus, this is the reason why we need to live a life of utter dependence on the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the main point for today's message. Today, we will study and learn how the Holy Spirit does this in our lives, okay? So first, let's go to the beginning of chapter 8. The beginning of Romans 8 flows directly from the last part of Romans 7. Kung naalala nyo last week, Paul ended with a cry of anguish. Do you remember that? A frustration of who will be able to save him from this body of death. Let's read that. Romans 7, 24. Sabi ni Paul, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Then he answers the only way we can change and grow. Romans 7, 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. So after verse 25, in Romans 8, 1, Paul says this, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Immediately in a sudden turn of events, Romans 8, 1 gives us one of the most comforting words of a, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ can possibly hear. If Romans 7 depressed you last week, and to some degree it should, again, because of the effects of indwelling sin in our lives, Romans 8 ought to give you a different feeling. Romans 8 ought to give you comfort. Unang banat palang dito sa chapter na ito. Therefore, there is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In Romans 5, 16, and 18, we recall Paul saying that the trespass brought condemnation. But now because of Christ, there's no more condemnation. He's saying, if you're in Christ, the judgment of God will no longer be pronounced against you because the judgment will be placed on Jesus Christ. Yeah? Kaya nga, thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. But why is Paul able to say that, that there's no more condemna condemnation? In verse 2, ito kasi, sabi ni Paul, for, diba? because this is the reason, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. It's because of the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. There's a new law in operation. This law sets us free from the law of sin and death through Jesus Christ. Ito na yung sinasabi ko main point natin kanina. The work and the power of the Holy Spirit is now seen in operation here at the beginning of Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit applies the work of God when God sent Jesus Christ, His Son, to defeat the law of sin and death. In verse 3 and 4, Paul gives us a detailed account of the what, the how, and the result of Christ's finished work on the cross. And this finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross is what the Holy Spirit applies in our lives. So, tinan natin tong ano, finished work ni Christ on the cross. Romans 8, 3 to 4. Sabi dyan, For God had, has done what the law weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Itong verses 2 to 4, sobrang jam-packed nito. We could spend hours just studying these two verses. Hindi po enough ang isang preaching para ar aralin lang ito. And, you know, just, kaya nga, ano, magsasagway lang a little bit. Ha? Kaya nga tayo may mga victory groups. Woo! Right? Para continually mag-grow pa tayo in Christ Jesus. If you're interested, we have assimilation rooms after this service. You can find the link later in our comment section so that you can connect with us if you want to grow more in your walk with God. Okay? Kasi this is really a lifelong process. Okay? So we need people in the church community to help us grow in our walk with God. So, and segue. So, Going back to verse 2 to 4, since sobrang jam-packed nito, I'll just give you a very short summary of the what, the how, and the result of Jesus' work on the cross. Kasi hindi ito yung main point natin, but I think it's important for us to know the finished work of Christ here. So here, we see God the Father sending Jesus Christ in this world in the like the Sabbath Paul of sinful flesh. This short phrase talks about the doctrine of the incarnation where Jesus Christ needed to become man in order to represent us and redeem us. He lived, a life of, he lived a perfect life, sinless and spotless. Tapos in verse 4, 
Sabi doon, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. This is what we call as the doctrine of imputation. Or more specifically, double imputation. Our sins were placed on Christ and His perfect record of obedience and righteousness is now placed on us. When God sees us, it's as if we have perfectly, fully obeyed the law. Can you believe that? Ito, kapag Kristiyano ka, did you know this? That you can actually call yourself righteous. Righteous kang tao, not because of what you do, but because the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us through Jesus Christ. In those two short verses, dami nang ganap niyan, di ba? Ang galing ng work ni Christ, di ba? Kala natin, ganun-ganun lang yun. But there's so much more going on there. Now again, Paul says in verse 2, na, The law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit applied the finished work of Jesus Christ in our lives. To help us better understand this, we have to understand a little bit about the nature of God. Kasi the God that we believe in, is Trinitarian. Meaning, God eternally exists in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is important. Each person is fully God. But there's only one God. Three in one. That's the mystery of the Trinity. All three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, possess the attributes of God. Omniscience, omnipresence, He's a loving God, He's compassionate, all of those things. But but they have their own roles in the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. One example of those roles is the role that they play in redemption. Theologians say that it is God who planned redemption, God the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, finished the work of redemption, and now the Holy Spirit applies the finished work of Christ in our lives. Kaya, going back to verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Apart from the Holy Spirit applying the work of Christ in our lives, we will still be dead in our sins and in our transgressions. If it's not for the Holy Spirit, there will be no hope for us. Continuing on in Romans 8, 5-8, to eight, uh, Paul here shows and gives us a picture of our, what our state is like apart from the Holy Spirit being in us. Every single human being is dead in their, in their transgressions apart from the Holy Spirit applying the work of Christ in their life. So let's read this passage of scripture. And tinan natin kung maaalala natin, makaka-relate tayo nung bago tayo na born again through the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Romans 8, 5 to 8. Sabi dito, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Paul says, when the Holy Spirit did not yet do His work in us, our minds were set on the things of the flesh. When you say, set their mind here, dito, um, this doesn't just refer to a person's thoughts or mental processes. This includes the person's desires. This is what a person is preoccupied with the most. This is what engrosses you. Ultimately, think about it. Naalala nyo, nyo ba nung hindi pa tayo Christiano? It is the things of the world that preoccupied us the most. Money, fame, power, romantic relationships, yung status natin, our reputation, right? And many other things. Anything that did not have, um, that did not have anything to do with the glory of God, hindi siya yung ultimate sa buhay natin. Doon nakaset yung mind natin apart from the Holy Spirit, the things of the flesh. Ito, kaya in this pandemic, uh, sin and selfishness still rules the world today. You would think na, sana naman nagtutulangan yung mga tao during this crisis. Kasi we fight against a common enemy, COVID-19. But because sin rules and reigns in the hearts of men who do not have the Holy Spirit, the gospel in their lives, we still, ano, we, we see all sorts of depravity and sinful things happening in the world today. For, for many of you watching this online, nainis tayo, di ba? When we see these things happening, all these corruption, all of all of the evils in the world, wag na tayo ma-surprise. Kasi ito talaga yung state ng mundo natin. People who do not have the Holy Spirit in them. People who have not received the gospel in their lives have their minds set ultimately on the things of the flesh. It's only the gospel that can free human beings from such sinful and selfish desires. 
That's why the church never really closed its doors during this season. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin tayo sa pag-advance ng kingdom ni God. Amen? In our own homes and our own areas of responsibility. Yan. Wherever God has placed, you never forget that the gospel is still what the world most desperately needs during this time. Amen? Amen. So, so that's our state. Yun yung sinasabi ni Paul. Apart from the Holy Spirit, applying the work of Christ in our lives, we set our minds on the things of the flesh. Now, in verse 9, Paul continues, sabi niya, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. When, when Paul said, you, he was talking to believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, talking to people who received the gospel in their lives, talking to people who have been born again through the power of the Holy Spirit. So sabi niya, you're no longer in the flesh, but now in the Spirit. Thus, as a result of you being in the Spirit, Paul said, those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Naalala niyo ba? Before, we didn't want to do anything with God. We didn't want to submit to God's love. Many people just pretend to want to submit. Pero religiosity lang yun at the end of the day. Deep down, no, they know in their hearts that it's full of evil desires. If they, want to get, if, if they can get away with the, with the law, they will probably do it. But now, dahil na born again tayo, because the Spirit of God works in us, our, our hearts now have a new orientation. Thus, Holy Spirit opened our eyes through the gospel. The imperishable seed of the Word of God has been planted now in our hearts. It's made possible now in our hearts to want to honor God. Now, we have a desire to want to glorify Him. Before, ayaw na ayaw natin yun, di natin siya iniisip. But now, we want to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Tama ba? Amen? Amen. It's possible because of the Holy Spirit's work in us. Does that mean perfect na tayo? Again, again, just like our answers during the previous weeks. Our hearts ought to have a new orientation. We are now trying our best to set our minds on the things of the Spirit. But, as we learned from last week, there's a battle that we face with sin and death. Pero ngayon, because we live in the new way of the Spirit, it's now possible for us to win against this war, the war within. It's possible for us to want to desire to obey the law, to want to honor God. Kasi yung Holy Spirit is now working and indwelling in us. Romans 8 verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Last week, we talked about the doctrine of indwelling sin. Remember that. Today, we learn the concept of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the action by which God takes up permanent residence in the body of a believer in Jesus Christ. Because of the gospel, the Holy Spirit resides permanently in us. Diba? Jesus said that the Holy Spirit lives with us and will be in us. Paul in Corinthians says that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. This is another truth in Christianity that separates us from other major religions in the world. Kasi other major religions in the world say this, Do this, do that, follow the law to the best of your abilities, and good luck. Only in Christianity do we see God Himself taking permanent residence inside believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is also referred to as the Counselor, the Advocate, or the helper. He will help us in our time of need. The question is this, will we depend on Him for grace and strength, or are we going to go through life just being dependent on ourselves, just trying to accomplish the law based on our own effort and strength? Sayang kasi, the Holy Spirit is there to help us because it's hard for us to obey God left on our own. This is another paradigm shift that needs to happen in us. We need to depend not on our own strength, but only with the strength that the Holy Spirit gives for us to live this life. Romans 8, 10 to 11, it says here, But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Paul says that the spirit will give life to our mortal bodies. We can overcome sin and death because of the power that the Holy Spirit gives. Yes. It's possible. Imagine this with me. The power that is made available for us. God himself lives and resides in us. That's always a mind-blowing thought if you think about it. 
knowing that God resides and dwells in us, if we're more aware of that fact, tama ba, that we would be more careful with our bodies because He dwells in us? That's just one thing. The second thing I want to point out is this. The power of the Holy Spirit is readily made available to us. God is so powerful, He is able to resurrect Jesus Christ from the dead. This, that same kind of power is with the Holy Spirit. Knowing, knowing that, how many of you know that nothing is impossible with the Holy Spirit working in us? Amen? Amen. Why am I saying this? Because a lot of times, we have a tendency to overestimate sin. And not to say na uh, mahina naman yung sin. No, that's not the point. Uh, I mean, we cannot win against sin left on our own. But most of the time, sobrang natin siya in-overestimate. Ang hirap talaga nito, mukhang defeated na, na ako. Di ko talaga kaya. Imposible na ma-overcome ko talaga tong issue na to sa buhay ko. Addictions, yung anger ko. Issues ko about identity, forgiveness. Di ko talaga ma-forgive yung ano yun, nanakit sa akin eh. Loneliness, depression. Many people in the world today succumb to depression, right? Folks, if you've received the gospel in your life, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He is our helper. He can help us in troubled times. And He is powerful, powerful enough to raise Jesus from the dead. There's no sin too great. There's no pain too deep. The Holy Spirit has the ability to help us overcome that. Amen? Amen. We just need to live a life of active dependence on the Holy Spirit. In verse 12 to 13, Paul tells us how we should respond in relation to the knowledge that the Holy Spirit lives and dwells in us. Romans 8, 12 to 13. Sabi dito. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Verse 12. We've been pounding on this truth for the past few weeks already. Tama ba? We're, parang, ano yan, there's, we're no longer slaves to sin, but we are slaves to righteousness and God. The corollary of not being obligated to the flesh anymore should be true. Now we are debtors to the Spirit. Our disposition should be to live a life that constantly obeys the Spirit's leading in us. Every single day must be a moment-by-moment -moment dependence on the Holy Spirit. We must learn to no longer depend on ourselves, but only to the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about it. If we depend on ourselves for our own strength, we can only do so much. We're limited. Standards nga ng law, never natin siya reach for ourselves. Eh. But if we depend on the Holy Spirit, on the power that He gives us, there's no limit as to what He can do in and through us. Do you believe that? We must depend less on ourselves and we must depend more and more in the Holy Spirit. Every single day, di na tayo dapat nakadepend sa sarili natin, but we must fully depend in the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if we do, if we live a life full of dependence on the Holy Spirit, now it will really be possible for us to Live victoriously against sin. In Romans 8.13, it is the Paul. Sabi niya, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Folks, yung sanctification natin is primarily the result of the Holy Spirit working uh, in us. But that doesn't mean, okay, that it's all about the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Our role is we have to obey the Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit's leading in our lives. Theologian Wayne Grudem in his book, Systematic Theology, said this, The role that we play in sanctification is both a passive one in which we depend on God to sanctify us and an active one in which we strive to obey God and take steps that will increase our sanctification. We can now consider both of these aspects of our role in sanctification. So this is the dynamics that that we need to know in terms of our relationship with the Holy Spirit. So let's talk, let's talk about the passive obedience first. Pansin niya ba, over time, over time we see changes happening in us because of the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Right? Sige, try nyo alalahanin yung first few moments, weeks, and months nyo na naborn again ka. Re remember those times? Madami pang wrong mindset residing in us, right? However, over time, you saw yourselves grow, right? I saw myself grow. You see the changes 
yung mga mindset natin dati na hindi biblical and hindi based sa word ni God. Over time, we saw ourselves grow and renew our minds based on the word of God. I believe it's because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Si God lang talaga makakapagbago sa atin. Kasi left on our own, we're dead. So over time, nag-grow tayo because God is continually growing us. But at the same time, those things happened because you obeyed God's leading. Ito yung active obedience natin in sanctification. We constantly meditated on His Word, which is really, really inspired by the Holy Spirit in the first place, tama? We prayed and communed with God. We worship. And as we worship, we felt the Spirit stirring something in our hearts and causing faith to grow in us, diba? And so on and so forth. So, yes, the Holy Spirit takes on the primary role in sanctification. But remember this. Sanctification is a passive and an active obedience in God. We have to take of, of this, this truth. So going back to the main point that I said earlier in, in this part of the preaching. This is what I wanted to communicate. We must trust and depend in the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope we will depend on Him more and more and less and less in ourselves. As the Holy Spirit speaks and leads us, I hope that our disposition is to always obey Him and trust Him that we can put to death the things of the flesh, right? Question, as you're listening to this message and preaching, what is the Holy Spirit revealing in your heart right now? What are the things that you need to put to death through His power and work? Maybe maybe it's you know, a, a sin issue that has encumbered you Hirap na hirap ka talaga let go. But maybe because you're trying to depend on your own strength. Depend less on yourself and trust that the Holy Spirit is more powerful than the sin that encumbers you. Right? Folks, sanctification. This is another paradigm shift that we need to learn. To add on from the past three weeks of the messages we've been hearing. Diba? Ano yung natuna natin for the past few weeks? We learned that we died to the law. We, we are no longer slaves of sin, but slaves of righteousness, right? Today, we add to our learning on how, how we can grow, we mature, and change for the better and are sanctified. As Christians, we live in the new way of the Spirit. We are to fully depend in the power and the work that the Holy Spirit gives us. So, if we do so, we can put to death the, the, the deeds of the flesh and sin in our bodies. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's really possible. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. As, as we near to close this message, this paradigm shift that needs to take place in our minds is so crucial and, and important. This involves a new way of thinking that Jesus Christ introduced to us in the New Testament. When we say that we are to depend in the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, ang main difference nito do sa previously sinabi ni Paul about being bound to the law is this. Being bound to the law kasi is about legalism. But the new way of the Spirit is not legalism. Legalism, I have to, I have to, I have to. If I'm not, if I don't do this right, I'm not righteous. But when we depend on the Holy Spirit, living in the new way of the Spirit is primarily about a relationship. A relationship with God, our Father. Because He's our Father, we want to fully depend on Him. We want to please Him. We want to obey Him in, in what He has to say in His Word. Amen? Nakita niyo yung difference be, being bound to the law and living in the new way of the Spirit? And this is not something I invented. Romans 8, 14 to 15 confirms this. It says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Probably one of the most important things that the Holy Spirit can do in our lives is to make us aware of our adoption. Because of the gospel, we have now become sons and daughters in God's eyes. Dati kasi, ito yung truth po ah. Dati kasi, we were enemies of God. But now, because of the gospel, we can be confident to say that we are His children. And a child, he doesn't have to live in fear anymore. He enjoys his relationship with his father. Hopefully, relational lang natin nakikita itong Christianity. And not just religion, where we have to live a life of trying to Obey the law on, by ourselves. This is one of the biggest difference when it comes to fighting against sin and death. That's one of the biggest difference. We have to constantly think of God as our Father. And the Holy Spirit will help us with this as well. 
J.I. Packer in his book, Knowing God, said this, If you want to judge how well a person understands Christianity, find out how, how much he makes of the thought of being God's child and having God as his father. If this is not the thought that prompts and controls his worship and prayers and his whole outlook in life, it means that he does not understand Christianity very well at all. For everything Christ taught, everything that makes the New Testament new, and better than the old, everything that is distinctively Christian as opposed to merely Jewish is summed up in the knowledge of the fatherhood of God. As we read what Paul wrote here in Romans, we should not allow this truth to escape us. Part of the gospel is the Holy Spirit gives us a revelation of who God is in our lives and that He is our Father. That He is our Father. We no longer live in fear. If God's if God's going to punish us or not because we failed, we failed the standard of the law, hindi na ganun yung mindset natin, no longer slaves, again, to fear. But now we cry, Abba, Father, we love Him. And we know and understand that He loves us. And this is the kind of love that will really transform us in our relationship with others. Ang galing ng gospel. Folks, I hope we constantly go back and refer here to Romans 6 to Romans 8 for a deeper understanding of how we can really change in this life. We are no longer bound to the law. But now we are God's children, no longer trying to keep the law left on our own effort and living in fear of punishment. But now we live in the love of the Father and us loving, loving um, Him back through the power of the Holy Spirit. All this is made possible because of the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? Amen. We are to fully depend in the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In our lives. This is the only way. We will grow in our sanctification. Let me just close us with a word of prayer. And please don't go yet because we will be taking up communion after we sing this worship song. So let's just pray. Father, we are thankful, we are blessed because of your word. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us understand what is this new way of the Spirit, no longer being bound to the law, but living in the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Heavenly Father, even for all of us still listening to this preaching message, touch our hearts. Give us a greater revelation, Lord God, of what it means for you to be our Father. And we know that it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we can have a better revelation of who you are in our lives. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that our everyday thought that will consume us is dependence in the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, depend less in ourselves and, and depend more and more in the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you because through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can put to death the misdeeds of the body, Lord God. Because we know left on our own, this is impossible. But with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, in the same power that resurrected Christ from the dead, we have that, Lord God, at our disposal. And just pray, Lord, that we will fully trust in you, Lord God, in this life as you continually sanctify and grow us. We lift up your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let's just continue to worship God as we prepare ourselves for, for communion.